Hey guys, now we are going to be looking at a Tracer gameplay, and this is again another replay review. Um, this one he's playing with a few friends, and I don't believe this was a competitive match. It is, I believe it's just a Storm League match with a few friends. Generally for Tracer, I often use a lot of other resources. I, I highly recommend checking out like Mockery. He's got a lot of content on Tracer and definitely a better Tracer player than myself, as well as a better Tracer analyst. That being said, there are still a lot of things that I can teach um, on this particular topic, one of which is how to approach playing heroes like Tracer, because our goal with heroes like Tracer are, are very similar. Um, whether you're playing Tracer, Genji, you're playing even, uh, even some heroes like Vala or, or Lucio, there are a lot of things to do with those heroes and a lot of benefits. In fact, in European competitive play, they generally call these mosquitoes. And so you have to imagine yourself as a mosquito of what you can and can't do. Can a mosquito kill a bear? Well, yes and no. I mean, with the assistance of maybe a disease, potentially over time a mosquito can kill a bear. But overall, a mosquito's job is to be annoying and to distract people so that their team can do something greater. Now, eventually, a mosquito can lead to major damage. Like I said, a mosquito could... I'm probably going a little too far with this analogy, but, I mean, for the most part, a mosquito could carry a disease, and the disease could lead to something major. Treat these heroes like mosquitoes. They are here to be annoying, and your goal is to not get hit. You are squishy, you do a lot of damage, you are very mobile, but your damage is generally slower while you do have a ton of potential damage. It's generally slower. Tracer does have one major benefit. She has a ton of burst potential. But your goal on the early game of a mosquito, generally mosquitoes are going to be weak on wave clear and do okay camp clear. If all your lanes are being soaked, your job is to look for picks and to prevent people from rotating. For example, you are very mobile and you can... And you do a lot of damage, but it's spread over a, a, a decent period of time. So if you catch someone halfway through a rotation, you can follow them and damage them the entire way better than any hero in the game. Which means if you are catching people like, say, a Jaina, who's trying to rotate from lane to lane, you can completely prevent an enemy hero from double soaking as Tracer or Genji because you can move while attacking. And so one of the greatest benefits of a mosquito is where you can't double soak, you can prevent double soaking. And sometimes the best way to get ahead is not always doing everything in the game, but preventing the enemies from doing everything in the game. And that's what mosquitoes gain the most value out of. So in the early game playing Tracer, if your team has every lane soaked, you're going to look for picks, you're going to look for stopping rotations, you're going to potentially look to distract them if they're trying to go for a camp and prevent them from doing camps. Your job is to prevent things. I, I've said before that like on his grenade, turning off healing is kind of the same as doing damage. If you prevent 400 healing, it's effectively like doing 400 damage. Well, the same thing is true here. If you prevent an enemy from double soaking, it's like you're double soaking. If you prevent an enemy from doing a camp, it's like you're doing a camp because you are preventing their potential lead. It's not perfect. It's, it's just a, I would say it's like 80% of effective is doing it yourself, preventing the enemies from doing it, especially if you can lead to a kill while you're doing it. Now, as far as the build goes, there is one kind of relatively standard build people are going on Tracer with a couple exceptions. So to explain a little bit about the build, people are generally going one to punch, gives you an additional charge of your melee, giving you a lot more potential to leading to kills by yourself compared to the other talents. Um, something like Tracer rounds, 10% attack range, but it doesn't increase your damage at all. Where one to punch is going to allow you to get that second charge of your punch and it also reduces the cooldown so it's effectively increasing your burst damage and your sustain damage by doing it without one two punch you likely wouldn't have led to that kill part and gift is a little unreliable the bombs don't always go where you want them to go and so one two punch is the most reliable source of increased damage as tracer tracer rounds can be really beneficial in niche scenarios where you need to know maybe 
Um, I, I like using it against Samuro because it reveals which one of them is the real one by simply quickly attacking each of the, the Samuro clones. Generally, in under a second, you can find out the real Samuro, and it could be kind of beneficial, but it's not the greatest counter. One, two punch is still generally stronger. Level four, a lot of competitive Tracer players are taking Pulse Generation, even though a lot of... I, I think the win rate of this talent is a tad bit lower than the others because it does require a little bit more skill. You land a Pulse Bomb, and you will heal yourself 18% of your health over 1.5 seconds, and it recharges a charge of Blink. So you can charge in, bomb someone. The damage you took charging in, you're going to regen, and you'll be able to jump back out without using your E. You can use your E, and then you also have an extra dash in case someone's waiting at where your recall location is. I've already explained what you need to be doing in the early game, so I'm going to be talking over the early game and talking about the build most likely until we hit about the mid game. Um, I will point out, though, as far as just coaching this particular player, if you can't get a kill and your lanes are already soaked and all the enemies are not going for camps, they're not double soaking, your clear on siege camps is not terrible. Um, you can dodge all of their damage with the double melee. You're going to be able to clear up the camp relatively quickly. It's worth it to at least grab a couple of these, especially with the, the objectives that are spawning top. It's great to grab one of these before one of those objectives. The bruiser camps are a tad bit harder, but you could also get some value there because you do have heal over time. Speaking of this, while I have it paused, I do want to just clarify um, some of the best healers for Tracer are the ones that can heal her while she's much further away. Um, Malfurion's probably one of the best ones because his heal lasts something like 20 seconds. And so she can stay topped off very far away from Malfurion. White Mane is kind of a budget Malfurion for that. Um, I even like Deckard because at at uh, level 13, you can pop Ancient Blessings. And then she can go in for 8 seconds doing increased DPS and also healing for every hero hit with the explosions of Ancient Blessings. So for 8 seconds, you're kind of doing a larger amount of damage. And also you have a lot of uh, healing with that. Um Lily works in a pinch. You can throw a um, a uh, uh, water dragon on her. It's not great. Um, Taronda is also pretty strong. Level four, you give the um, uh, Loon's chosen to Tracer, and then as long as Tron is attacking a minion or whatever, you're getting healing from wherever you go. Those are some of the healers that are really, really good with Tracer. Some of the ones that are a little bit more challenging are like Alexstrasza. You can't easily get a lot of heals off that far away and you do a lot of percent health healing and because she has low um like just maximum health the percent health, he health healing is not as effective as it would be for a tank um but overall i mean it's not a terrible healer but just think about that when you are drafting alongside of a tracer this game is 30 minutes long so i'll probably cut it a tad bit short just because i don't want um us to have to go through all of that Level 7, um, generally only one talent is taken in the highest levels of play, with a couple exceptions. Locked and Loaded is the talent most people pick, but again, it requires a lot of practice to use. You reactivate Reload within the last 50%, and you do 40% more damage for that magazine. Locked and Loaded is the highest DPS increase, being at 40%. Slate of Hand... Um, makes it to where you reload 50% faster. This equals 20% more damage per second. So would you rather take 40% damage increase or 20% on a talent? Well, this talent, if you're good at it, is almost always better. Focus fire, if an entire ammo magazine is unloaded on an enemy, the last bullet deals 105 bonus damage. This equals 35% total magazine. Now these numbers are slightly off. I believe this one actually is something like 24% bonus damage per second and this one's closer to 31 percent uh, mockery had a, an entire post on that and i'm sure he'll correct all of that in my discord or um somewhere else but i know these numbers are slightly off purely because of the polling rate um of of how that actually works even though focus fire on paper seems really close to locked and loaded it can be a challenging talent to get a lot of value out of because sometimes you want to reload a little early sometimes you don't get a full magazine on someone um you never want to be restricted by the ability to like stop move because this kind of locks you into you have to stay near a target for that long and it makes you a lot more susceptible to a variety of things 
And again, it's still weaker than Locked and Loaded. So if you are wanting to play Tracer competitively, you may want to one-trick Tracer for a little while so that you can get this down to muscle memory so you don't need to think about it anymore. Uh, that being said, there is still an exception where this talent is sometimes taken in competitive play. And that is if your DPS is your shot caller. Having more and more things that your shot caller has to do makes it harder and harder to shot call. Even if things are muscle memory, that's still your subconscious mind handling a lot more information. And it is something that you may want to offload some of that information if you also have to have your subconscious handle a lot of other things at the same time. It's kind of like that idea of, um, there's all those studies about driving while talking on the phone. And those studies were replicated with hands-free technology and realized that driving while talking on the phone, even with hands-free technology, is still very dangerous. And you might have a lot of driving or communicating handled by muscle memory, but doing both of them at the same time makes both of those things significantly worse. And so that's kind of the thing with locked and loaded. A difference of 20% to make your shot calling much better is not that big of a deal, but... If you can, you should be practicing locked and loaded because it's just a purely higher DPS increase. All right, going forward, the level 10, there are a few talents you can take here. All three talents are viable no matter what anyone says. That being said, there are some that are just being used a tad bit more in competitive. The first and foremost is Sticky Bomb. Yes, I know I have Pulse uh, round sitting highlighted but sticky bomb is actually the most popular talent right now and that's partly because that slow adds a ton of viability the radius makes it to where it's really strong in aoe and you might be thinking well you're missing out on the sustained dps of pulse rounds and the burst dps of quantum spike but sticky bombs makes it easier to land your get stuffed um which is when you melee someone with a pulse bomb on them um it uh i gotta remember what this does it stuck the causes it to explode and knocks the target away so you can pop it immediately it's exploding and they're gonna be slowed by 70 percent and you can pop it instantly so it's like you can r onto someone pop it and they're stuck right they're slowed by 70 percent. they just took a huge burst damage you're right there and they can't get away and it's great if they're they get a bomb on them everyone wants to spread out but if they get a bomb on them and you explode it immediately everyone's slowed by 70 percent um now you can still take quantum spike which is like i said the highest burst it's been nerfed a lot this talent used to be 10 percent, then it was eight percent then it was seven percent then it was six percent Talents that are generally getting nerfed a lot are still usually viable after a couple nerfs, but after a few nerfs, they generally kind of hit that difficult moment. If you need to take out tanks, this is a great talent. If you don't need to take out tanks, the other talents are just generally better. Pulse rounds. Um, this talent's great. Increases the range of your, your pulse bomb. Generally isn't going to be that big of a deal because you're going to get used to it without that range. But the basic attacks... Giving you your pulse bomb faster is huge. You got to remember your pulse bombs tied to your healing. So if you're throwing more bombs out, you're healing more. So it, it all comes down to what you want. But sticky bombs is kind of the more teamfight oriented talent these days. Pulse rounds is more if you're still being that mosquito and constantly stopping people that are rotating. It's great if you're going against like a Zul that's just double soaking because you can stop him in mid, mid rotation and have an ult up almost every time that he's trying to rotate. Quantum Spike, again, if you've got a kill like a Diablo and you've got no one else in your team that can help with that and your team's not going for backline, then there are times you want to take it. So as we approach mid-game, I'll talk about the, the rest of the, the build later. As you approach mid-game, your goal is split between a few things. You going for the backline, it's rare to be able to kill people by yourself. So you need to really make a decision of what your goal is and you need to be able to shift back and forth because... Unlike a lot of other heroes where you have your one goal every team fight, for example, Yurel, I did a video on, on how Yurel works, what you should be doing mid game, what you should be doing end game, and your goals in team fights don't shift a lot. Um, your goal in a W build is to distract the enemies and um, then when the enemies, you, you zone out the back line and you push the, their front line into your team leading to a bunch of kills. You could do that every single game, get to Grandmasters without much of an issue if you get really good at it. Combined with, of course, macro and everything else. Um, Tracer's a little bit different. 
just because you can't lead to a kill on your own in the back line doesn't mean that you can't use that to zone out a couple people because you're so mobile you can zone out their back line and then you can kind of jump back to your front line again and you can assist in leading to the kill of a tank and then go back to their back line. There is a potential for leading the kills by yourself, but it gets really, really difficult. When you get get stuffed, it becomes a lot more possible, but it's still rather difficult. So keep that in mind. There are a lot of potentials and things that, that, that pop up when you're trying to decide that. But mid game, your goal is to be a distraction of the back line and also still look at the, the targets that your team is attacking to add extra damage and see if you can't finish off a target that your team's already attacking. This is a great example of Varian was going onto a frontliner. You joined that fight going onto the frontliner. You used your mobility to get up to there. And now you're heading kind of through. You did take a lot of unnecessary damage. Dash through wall is something that you can certainly do. Recall was another potential, but because you were running away, recall would have put you back in the enemy team. And you kind of backed off. Remember, you are playing one of the most mobile heroes in the game. You should be able to avoid almost all AoE. So the one thing that you'll probably need to be improving on your team fights is go in, pop a target, get out. You went in, you killed a Lili, and then you walked the same path that your team walked to get there. You took all the same damage that your team took. You gotta remember, you're playing Tracer. You can jump around. You've gotta jump around. And so mid game, you wanna be jumping around team fights, leading to quick kills and backing off or leading to high bursts of damage and scaring off backline. I would generally not waste any burst on backliners at full health. I would try to scare them off. And if they don't get scared off, get them to about half health, use your R, use your W and then finish them off. Otherwise you're gonna play safe, kind of move around the edges of fights rather than the middle of fights and try to look for kills that the enemies are not expecting. Be careful about jumping at backliners that have a lot of answers to Tracer. I would say uh, blinds are a big one. If she blinds you and you're the only one there, it you could lose a lot of value. Not to mention healers that have a lot of self-healing like Deckard. You could be working on trying to kill a Deckard for a very, very long time. So it's generally best to not deal with a, not try to deal with a Deckard. Um, that being said, Decker can't really do much to you because you could kite around him for a long time, but you're also wasting a lot of your own time. You got to think about it this way. Decker throws one potion at himself, heals the shield and his health by quite a bit, and then he can throw a potion at his team, throw some roots out, and then throw one more potion at himself, and he's wasting your entire time and also still healing his team. Same thing with like a Malfurion. He gets to heal everyone at the same time. Lucio gets to heal everyone at the same time. Some healers, it's not really worth throwing a lot of effort into. There are some healers, though, that they have to focus a lot of their time and energy healing themselves. And so those are ones that you'll have a lot of value. Or ones that can't heal themselves at all, like uh, Ana. Her only heal on herself is, is a grenade that is doesn't heal very much. So Ana's a great target to kind of um, harass, which is kind of fitting because it works the same way in Overwatch. Um, Tracer is one of the most frustrating things to deal with as an Ana player. Um, Tracer and Genji. I, I play Ana a decent amount in Overwatch, and Tracers and Genjis ruin my day. Um, it's Everyone's like, oh, I'll just hit a sleep dart. It's like, good luck, especially in Overwatch. Um, perfect. So let's get back into the build and talk a little bit more. A lot of people still like the idea of grabbing Untouchable. While Untouchable seems like a great idea, I do want to point out that because these additions to your uh, basic attack damage is additive, you're going to have that 40% more damage already with Locked and Loaded. It's a little less effective, but it's still pretty nice. Um, so don't, don't trash it right there. But it's the fact that Jumper is just so good. When Blink has no charges, it refreshes faster. Casting Blink gives you a shield, and that shield stacks. So you can have a shield. It just makes you really hard to kill, and you get a lot more value out of team fights. Again, you're fighting near your team. I want you to fight on the outskirts of fights. If you want to take, deal damage to this uh, Jaina, you need to be down here instead of being right here. Because if you're right here, the damage that's thrown at this person's also going to hit you. If you're right here and you're trying to damage Lili, the damage that's thrown at this person's also going to hit you. You want to be in a position where abilities aimed at you will hit no one but you. And you'll probably dodge them because you're Tracer. And you want to be in a position where abilities aimed at your team will never hit you. And so the only thing that should ever hit you is Tracer is basic attacks are point and click abilities. And if you're going against a team like this, 
You've got laser, which you can dash out of to break it. And you've got basic attacks and, I mean, blinds. They should not be ever doing much to you at all. And so you should be practically unkillable this game, especially if you're going to take jumper. But you can see you're getting hit by the same abilities that are aimed at your team. And you're only really doing damage to their front line, which is okay if your whole team's attacking their front line like that. It's a lot easier to kill those those uh, heroes, and uh, otherwise you should be pretty good. Feel free to use your jumps to get around while you're slowed. Um, you got to remember, if you're taking jumper, you use all three of them. You're gonna get your your recharge uh, at least for one of them back pretty fast. And then level 16, the talent of choice. In this case, you went with ricochet. Ricochet's not bad but i would heavily recommend taking heavy-handed if you're looking at getting kills quick um bullet spray if you need to double soak ricochet is okay but it's actually ta like it's balanced around both like locked and loaded uh leeching rounds and also tracer rounds and so if you're not taking all of those talents you're taking a talent that's ba balanced around talents that you're not even taking where heavy handed is balanced around W talents, which you've taken, and bullet spray is balanced around W talents, which you've taken. So you're you're missing out on what's really valuable. If you need to lead to one quick kill every fight, heavy handed is huge for doing that. Combine the one two punch, heavy handed, um, any of the the level tens, and get stuffed. And you could quickly 100 to 0 backliners, like healers that can't heal themselves or healers that's already used their heals. Um, you can 100 to 0 them before they really have a chance to react. If you're playing Tracer and you're against an Ana and you have this build um, with, with a Heavy Handed instead, you will be able to 100 to 0 Ana before she can react almost every fight. And then you don't really lose much because you can use recall to get back out or you can simply dash and get shields to get back out. But basically you can dash in, get a giant shield, blow up the healer and then recall out and not have any recourse about it whatsoever. And then you can go right back in and start melting their front line uh, and they won't have a healer to deal with it anymore. So that's the reason why I recommend those talents so much more than Ricochet. You want to be jumping in, you want to be popping a target quickly, and you want to be jumping out. Um, bullet spray is good, again, if you have to double soak, but, I mean, look at your team. Thrall, he can deal with waves. KT can double soak. And, I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be that big. Not to mention, you're against a blind. You don't want your build to rely on auto attacks. As you start approaching late game, which I consider late game to be level 16 and on, Tracer's um, structure in fights is, is changing. Now you're slowly getting to the ability where you can pop a backliner without much assistance from your team. And your goal is less of a mosquito and more of a... Uh, I don't know, I can't really think of like... I was going to say like a wasp, but like... Imagine like a killer bee, where you're actually killing... Killer Ble bees actually killer. Is that more of like a... I don't really know. I'm guessing if you're allergic to them, you could probably die. But like, or get just bit, a, or bit stung a ton. I don't know. Um, your job, yeah, you're fine here. Uh, worst case, when he does that, you recall and you just dash away. Yeah, you're fine. Um, so, the your job now is to lead to bursty kills that the enemies are not expecting. And... Level 20 especially, this gets more serious, but even at level 16, you do have this potential. Whenever you catch anyone at about 70% health, you're pretty safe to just jump in with three dashes, get that giant shield, smack them once, auto them, throw an R on them, smack them again, and then uh, a couple more autos, and you can dash out if needed, or you can press your E to get out, or whatever. That's your goal now. Your goal is to pop one backliner very quickly at the start of fights and then get out. Now keep in mind about their team. They have a Lili. It's probably one of the best healers to, to deal with a, a Tracer just because she can blind you and then heal herself and her allies really quickly. So your job is going to shift a little bit. You're going to have to get people a little bit lower before you try to combo them. You want to be a little bit annoying. You want to wait for the blinds to go out. You want to wait for a few other things to go out. And then you want to jump in and get a kill. Your, your bomb throwing, you'll need a little bit of practice. 
it's something that you you definitely just want to keep practicing. I, I don't want to like harp on missing a bomb every time that you miss a bomb, but that is something that if you want to play Tracer, there's just a few things you need to get down perfect. Landing bombs is huge. There's a few tricks to it to make it a tad bit easier, um, but overall, muscle memory is going to be your best bet on getting that down perfect. That was actually pretty strong right there. And I think you're using a pretty good use of your dashes so you get the shields right. But I do want to also continue to preface, you need to be fighting on the outskirts of battles rather than in the middle of battles. You keep fighting in the middle of battles and you're taking huge amounts of your health from AoEs. You should almost never take damage from AoEs. You should only be taking damage from single targets. Now they do have some really good answers to it. Like they have a water elemental. So that's one of my favorite counters to Tracer is actually using a water elemental. Oh, you're going to take a chunk of damage here. Okay, that was that was okay. But yeah, the uh armor reduction of uh of this gets pretty insane when you're actually um abusing like that stuff. It gets pretty wild. There is also some people are still taking total recall. Um so that they can jump in. But I, I find if you're taking total recall, it kind of defeats the purpose of jumper. The purpose of jumper is to jump in, get a giant shield, pop a target, and then before the shield even breaks, you recall out. Um, it, it makes total recall not really worth it because you're not going to take enough damage to, to need to recall out. But I will say, if they do have like Water Ellie and they've got multiple people on you that are all trying that, I think Total Recall's okay. Because let's say they've got an auto attacker that's going to be focusing on killing you. They've got Water Ellie and a few other things. All right, we're going to fast forward a little bit and we're just going to approach the next fight. Another reason why Ricochet is frowned upon. Now, the enemies are cursed. But if the enemies weren't cursed, if you're ever pushing on a fort, a keep, or a core, and Ricochet bounces to an enemy, suddenly you're tanking. And that's the last thing you want because point and click abilities are your nemesis. Auto attacks are your nemesis. So to have a core auto attacking you, you can't dodge it. Um, it really, really sucks. So another reason why Ricochet is, is generally frowned upon for Tracer mains, because it, it makes it to where you start getting attacked instead. You can... Uh, you can recall at the end of this if you want to, because you won't have enough dashes left. Um, but I do want to also point out, if you did have Get Stuffed, you could have hit him with a bomb, press W, and he would have got knocked away, and then you could have dashed away and not been slowed. Um, but that's okay. You recall to get rid of the damage over time. You jump into the fight again. You're jumping into the same range as your team. It doesn't hurt you here, um, but it... You are just taking a lot of unnecessary damage. You took a stun you shouldn't have taken. You took a frostbolt you shouldn't have taken. And you used a lot of your dashes when you didn't really need to. So your big thing, you need to be on the outskirts of fights. You're going to have to deal with top. It's risky to try to do anything here. You don't have your bomb available and the enemies are all available. Um, all she has to do is do water elemental on you and you'll have to use your, your recall or a bunch of dashes and you're going to be in trouble. Thrall's going for clearing, which you probably should have done. Um, my worry is that uh, Blaze is just going to walk around this direction and Leoric's going to walk around this direction and Thrall dies for nothing. Where if Blaze walked around this direction, you could just dash right past him. Or Thrall can't. I mean, he has teleport, but he did already use it. Um, either way, it's not a big deal. Whenever you get this far behind, it's always one of those things of like... not not. It's not that you guys are like that far behind. It's more of just like... When stuff like this happens... Everyone's always like, oh, should I have gone here? Should I have gone here? I'm like, you should have been in a situation to begin with. But it's okay. So as far as your build, change those two things and practice, practice, practice. Because you do have the ability to just drop targets very quickly. Um, and it's something that I might actually show really quick in a video. Yeah, we're at 30 minutes. I'm going to show this in a video because I, I feel like this is more important than basically repeating the same things. Be a mosquito. Go around in in um, 
in directions people aren't expecting and try to pop targets in the back line very quickly. So I'm going to show you guys uh, how much damage you can do. And I probably won't even do the combo correctly. Again, there are other people out there that can teach this so much better or show this a lot better. But I'm going to show you how just an average player picking up Tracer, what they can do with just a teeny bit of understanding on like how her talents work and, and what you should be doing with her. Um, of course, we're going to have to wait through a load screen because I don't feel like editing this out. Um, and I will have to... Uh, have to log back in because this was an older replay it was an older replay i believe it was on the same patch but we had like a patching error stuff uh again guys these are patreon replays they are the replays that i have um for um for any one of my patrons that are at the 15 dollar a month Plan, and I will do one replay review for them every month. And this is actually one from March that I'm just uh, scheduling out pretty late. But um, so I apologize. Some of these are going to come out just a tad bit late. Um, that being said, um, usually I'll get them out within like... Yeah, that's not too encouraging. Um, but it's cheaper than a lot of the other replay reviews out there. So... Uh, not all of them are public. I only make the ones public with permission that I also want to make public. If you're making 30 videos on the same um, hero, I probably won't make it public. So um, ultimately, what you want to be doing, and, and we'll go with Sticky Bomb here because we're just going to change a couple things. And let's change the enemy hero to Jaina, for example, because you guys were going against a Jaina. Um, and we'll go with get stuffed. So your goal here is to get really used to the reload mechanic, right? We're getting the buff damage, we'll reload, we'll press the, the reload buff. Reload buff lasts until you attack again, from my understanding. And so we're gonna use that to get charged up. And I forgot right there, and, and I pressed it late, so it reloaded again. So it, with some inconsistency, you're probably not gonna be able to get it perfectly. So we have the... Um, We'll, we'll reload really quick just to get a uh, the buff ready. And our goal is going to be dash three times in. We're going to dash in, ult, W, and you see half of her health's gone. And guess what? She slowed long enough we get the second W. You see how much damage we did? So with just the ult and the W, we did about 50% of her health. Because what's happening is a few things. You're lowering the armor right before the explosion and right before the damage of your melee. And so she's taking 50% of her health. And with Sticky Bomb, she's getting knocked back, but she's slowed by 70%. So it allows you to still lead to a, a really high damage combo. So again, we're going to just dash in. Oh, hold on. We're going to just dash in. We're going to bomb, hit her with Get Stuffed, and we're going to dash in and make sure that we're on her. And we're going to W one more time. It's under one reload if you actually do the reload mechanic correctly. It's under one reload. And then you'll have both of your charges of melee back within about eight seconds, eight to 10 seconds, right? Um, and so ultimately you're walking up and you're doing an incredible amount of damage. Now imagine this for a second. You're attacking someone and Lily throws out her blind. At the end of that blind, you dash in and you two shot the Jaina before the Lily has time to do with it because Lily's gonna throw out a heal, a blind, you wait until both of those are up, you walk up, you two shot the Jaina, Jaina's gone. And Jane is out of the fight. Now, Jaina has Ice Block, so you can't do this every time. But look how fast we can get this back up, right? We use our, our W, and look at our W. Our W gave us something like 20% on our, uh, on our bomb. And so now we have our bomb back up, and we're ready to go back in. So, I mean, naturally, it's a bot. Jaina is going to take some damage, finish her off. Um, but... It, that's, I mean, basically 100 to 0 on, um, and again, look, we're already at 35%. We smack, we're, we're at 55%. We smack, we're at 75%. And we go up, we smack again, and we're at our bomb. We wait to get our bomb back, or we get our, our smacks back. And again, this is just something that you could be doing at any time during these fights. And it, it's just crazy to me that people don't think about this. But yeah, um, basically, our goal is to dash in Go like that, dash one more time, get some damage off, and smack one more time. 
We're at about 4,000 damage. A little bit more if you actually do the reload mechanic, which I didn't do. Um, we're at 4,000 to 5,000 damage. Well, how many heroes have four to 5,000 er, health at, at uh, level 20? Imagine you're going against a soul laner like, I don't know, a hogger. Remember, we do 4, 000, 4 to 5,000 damage, and we still had a dash available because we took the, the jumper. So even if you're going against someone like a hogger, for example, look how much health he has. 5,000 health. So if we ran up to this hogger, and we hit him with a bomb, and we jumped at him, and we got a second uh, W on him, and we're just hitting him, We've got another W. Like, we can jump on this hogger and take out a hogger relatively easily. Now, he can spin away, but we don't commit very much. We have our bomb back off cooldown again, and we're getting our punch back on, on off cooldown. That's how strong this build is, guys. You can jump in, get quick kills, you can jump out, and you've got shields the entire time and the ability to jump out of fights whenever you want to. You quickly get back your blink charges after using all three. You quickly get back your bomb, even without taking the bomb talent. I'm not taking pulse rounds. I'm taking sticky bomb and I'm able to get my bomb back in, I mean, in under 10 seconds off of just punching people. And so the power of one, two punch, the power of heavy handed, get stuffed, and Sticky Bomb allows you to control one person on the enemy team for about 5 to 10 seconds. And then you can quickly take them out and move on to other targets. A couple more punches, you've got your bomb back up and you can go for another backliner. Any healer that doesn't have a lot of self-healing, you can pop any time of these fights. Tracer is all about being a mosquito, but also confidence. So early game, you want to be the biggest mosquito possible. Late game, you need to practice these combos where you have them perfectly and down to muscle memory so it's all confidence. You know you can dash in, get a quick kill, and, da and, and recall out or dash out or whatever you need to do. Um, you need to have that confidence, so you have to limit test a little bit. Even before you get get stuffed, you can still do a ton of damage. I mean, even without your, your bomb... But let's just, uh, let's set the level to 16 really quick. And I'll show you, without auto attacking, you can still do uh, quite a chunk of damage. Um, so again, we're gonna do the same thing. Pulse generator, locked and loaded. Um, we'll go sticky bomb and uh, jumper, heavy handed. So what we're gonna be doing here is with this version, you gotta remember how long the armor reduction lasts, four seconds. How long does the bomb take? Two seconds. So you're safe to always do the bomb first and then your melee, but you could even get away with throwing the bomb first with the slow and then meleeing. It doesn't really matter. So let's throw the bomb and then we'll melee, right? And we'll do one more W and we're out. Without even doing the reload mechanic, or auto attacking any more than just the two melees and one bomb. We did 3000 damage. How much health does Hogger have right now? 4200. Follow him a little bit, maybe get a third melee attack, um, and you kill a Hogger without getting the level 20 talent. And I mean, imagine the people that you can kill without even that. Let's spawn an Ana for a second. We'll uh, get the reload set up just so that we do it at least for one reload. Um, we'll toggle cooldowns. And Ana has just right around that damage number that we were looking at. So again, we're going to ult. We're going to just queue through. We're going to set the reload and use a W. Ana's gone. She didn't have time to do anything. She might have had time to throw a W on herself or try to, try to sleep you. But Ana just dies every time that the enemies are not 100% focused on peeling her. So the last thing I was going to share really quick, um, let's go around level four and I will show you, you grab one, two punch, you grab pulse generator because those are the talents you took. And I just wanted to kind of show you that camps do not take that long. If we were to look at it, uh, we were at uh, 10. You just kind of go around, try to avoid damage, use your W off cooldown. It's not great. Don't get me wrong. It's not great. But if all your lanes are being soaked, like I said, and the enemies are not rotating between lanes, 
this is something that you might as well do. Level 4, and you can use your bomb to speed it up as well if you'd like, and some, some players certainly do that, because you'll probably get your bomb back before you need it. Um, and there you go. So we have a camp in 35 seconds, which definitely is not the fastest, um, but it's certainly not bad either. But you can see, without all the talents, it takes a lot longer to kill an Ana, right? Um, so this talent right here, with any ult talent, you're you're solid add that with get stuffed and you can pop people so fast composition b there's a world for it but this is this is not the the world we're playing uh, i think it it even worked with um the slow talent i can't remember who was doing it but they were running composition b with a sticky bomb and i don't remember exactly how they played it out but um what i'll say is uh guys there is so much potential with Tracer, and if you get good at her, she's one of those heroes that you can absolutely carry your games. The challenge with her is that early game lack of like wave and camp clear, you're kind of at the will of your team to make sure that you're at least staying even in the game. You can do what you can to prevent the enemies from getting ahead, but you need to hope that your team at least stays even. After your team stays even, mid game you can be annoying, late game you can be devastating. Get quick kills without much commitment at all, and then you can stay safe and look for more kills. When Tracer gets to late game, she is one of the best assassins in the game. So hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully this tells you guys what to do. Not just a replay review, but it also shows you what you should be doing. Um, don't forget, you can always check out Mockery. He has a lot more experience on Tracer than I do. Um, and he's also broken down kind of the same games that I've looked at with Tracer. And he has his own perspective. So I'll give a shout out to Mockery. And uh, knowing him, he'll probably throw a comment down below. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And feel free to check out my other videos.